The mechanical keyboard market is being flooded with really nice budget options. Now Keychron is stepping into the ring to battle for the budget king belt. Hey y'all, welcome to Clackbait. Today we're taking a look at the new line from Keychron, the V1. This is a 75% ABS plastic tray mount keyboard that comes in a few different configurations. The price is pretty shocking, starting at $54 for the bare bones kit. Yeah, $54. You can also pick it up in bare bones with a knob for $64, fully assembled without a knob for $74, and a fully assembled with knob for $84. Now, at first glance, these prices are ridiculous, but keep in mind, the charge for shipping needs to be taken into account as well. Now out of the box, the kit is ready for switches and keycaps to get your board up and running. I threw in these Gateron North Pole switches for optimal RGB-ness. These are super smooth and come factory lube, and the sound is really deep. You can pick these up from my new affiliate partner, Nom Keys, using the link and the discount code below. These switches shine like some diamonds. Now let's take a look at how this thing looks paired with PPT bands and yeah. Neon. Now the version that was sent to me for review is this frosted black bare bones without a knob. So the bare bones kit comes with case in either translucent frosted black or carbon black, which is non-translucent. A fully assembled plate PCB with newly designed pre-lube screw and stabilizers and plate foam pre-installed. The plate is steel and as stiff as can be. The PCB is via compatible straight out the box, so you can map your keys to your heart's desire. It also comes with a case silicone dampener, keycap tool, switch tool, a straight cable, Allen wrench screwdriver, and all the extra screws and bits you need. Now this assembly requires you to remove eight screws at the bottom to separate the top and bottom case. From there, if you decide to remove the plate PCB assembly, it's another 12 screws. Yeah, 12 screws. This is how you can remove the silicone dampener if you choose not to use it. The case is made from ABS plastic, and I gotta say it's pretty solid in hand. No cheap plasticky creaky sounds coming from it like some of the other boards that I've used. I'm looking at you NK87. The eight case screw holes have metal inserts so you don't have to worry about damaging the case every time you open it. It doesn't have the metal inserts for the tray mount screws though, so be careful when you're tightening those down. Now next to the USB-C port, you'll find the Windows and Mac toggle, depending on how you roll. Now at the bottom, there are adjustable pullout feet that give you flexibility and typing angle going from a flat three and a half degrees to eight and a half degrees to 11 degrees. The front height is 18 millimeters. Fully built, it comes in at around 2.19 pounds with the silicone damper installed. Overall, I like the layout that they went with. You have all of your F keys along with the delete and a small blocker separating the navigation keys to the right and an exploded arrow cluster. The bezels are thicker on the forehead and the chin, giving the board a nice look on the desk. They did a nice job with the frosted black and the RGB shines through nicely depending on the switches you use. For the price, I give the V1 solid marks for design and build quality. Now as far as the feel is concerned, it's tray mount and stiff, full stop. On to the sound. So sound wise, the North Pole switches with the silicone dampener really didn't do it for me. It was just a little bit too muted. Since these switches are already deep, the silicone dampener took away a lot. Take a listen. So I decided to try it without the silicone dampener to see if the board will come to life a bit. And here's what we ended up with. Now next, I decided to forget the optimal RGB-ness and go with the Clackbait certified switch. 
the green jackets in its tactile form. These are really smooth switches with a pole long enough to give the homies a complex. You can pick these up in either tactile or linear at KNC Keys, link below. Yeah, so the sound of the board is obviously very dependent on the switches you decide to install in here. For me, it sounded best without the silicone damper, but it did add some hollowness. I'll test this out with some polyfill in a later build and see if it's the right mix. The new stabilizers felt surprisingly good from the factory. There was a little bit of ticking in the backspace, but adding a little bit more lube with the syringe can take care of that. Overall, I'll say the stabs perform pretty well, and I'll say the board sounds like what you can expect from a tray mount ABS plastic board, which is not a bad thing at all. Okay, so what's the final verdict? I actually like the board. I think it would have been better if they decided to go with more modern gasket mount structure, but for the price starting below $60 for a bare bones kit, I can't complain too much. If you're an enthusiast who cares for a softer typing experience and incredible sound, I wouldn't say that this is the way to go. For those people, I'd recommend spending a little bit more for a Tiger 80 Lite, but if you're looking for a solid, well-built product on a budget, this is the way. Now Keychron was smart to launch the V1 series in a 75% since there's a need for a good budget option with this layout. This board is definitely aimed at the entry audience who want to dip their toes in the mechanical keyboard hobby. This would also be a nice grab for someone who wants a work board but doesn't want to spend a ton for work clack. Now that's all I got. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. More heat headed to you. See y'all in the next one. Peace.